Hi and welcome back to my channel. My name is Erica. We are on block number 12 of our Sew With Me series. So today is block number 12, which means it's our last block in our Sew With Me series for this session. And we're gonna be making a super cute four pinwheel block. Now I know we've already made a pinwheel, but I wanted to show you this particular block, not only because it's absolutely adorable, but because I'm also gonna show you how to press your seams open and reduce that bulk right here in the center of your block. That way you have a nice, flat block even though you have a ton of different seams coming together and there's a lot going on. Now this is going to be super easy so let's go ahead and dive right into our block. Welcome back to today's block. Today we're going to be making four cute little pinwheels. I know we've done some pinwheel type blocks before. Today we're going to talk about pressing our seams open and how that can kind of affect the overall end result of our block. And I'm going to show you some tips on if you plan to press your seams open as well. So make sure that you download the free pattern that comes with the this block. It's going to be in the description box below the video and you're going to just want to click show more if you don't see that and then you should see a link for the PDF. So for this pattern we're going to need four pieces of background fabric and we're going to need four fun colors for our pinwheels. We're going to be making them all the same way so let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to take one of our background squares and one of our colored squares and we're just going to lay them right side together, just like this. And like in our previous videos, we're gonna do four half square triangles at a time. And so we're gonna sew around all four outside edges using a one quarter inch seam allowance. And then we're gonna come back and cut it diagonally to reveal four half square triangles. So I'm going to just do this with all of my pieces. And I have a couple different background fabrics here because I just didn't have enough. So I'm mixing and matching my background fabrics even. I've got one that's kind of a brown and one that's kind of a gray. Alrighty, and I'm just stacking these all over up at my sewing machine so I can just sew them all at once. Now one tip before we get started sewing, when you know you're gonna sew your seams open, I usually keep my stitch length somewhere in between like around two, two and a half. If I know I'm gonna be pressing them open, I'll actually reduce it to about one and a half. That's actually gonna help my stitches stay together. Sometimes when you press your seams open, you can actually pull those stitches apart. And so I like to just reduce my stitch length so that I know my seams will stay together when I press open. Now I've got all of my pieces here and I'm actually gonna cut them two at a time in the spirit of saving time. So I've just got them stacked up nicely and then I can just cut that. I'm not gonna move my fabric, I'm just gonna twist my ruler and cut. And now I've got four green and four pink half square triangles. Okay, and then we'll do the same thing to our other two. Okay, so now we've got the blues, the pinks, and the greens, and this one is upside down. Okay, now we just need to press these, and the key to half square triangles is pressing towards the color. I always press towards the color rather than towards my background. And I'm gonna do them two different ways. I'm gonna do one where I don't press open. So we'll do this blue one. We're just gonna press to one side. And then I'll do like the red one where I press open so you can see the difference. So I'm gonna leave these cause we'll just leave these pressed to one side. Let's go ahead and press these red ones open. And I just lay them all out so I can set the seams together. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna press to the dark side first. And I'm gonna let this cool because I don't want to burn myself. <laughs> so I'll just press these other ones while that's cooling. Okay, I'm gonna set these aside. And then let's go ahead and press these red ones open. So we're gonna take them and we're gonna flip them over. And then now I just need 
And I usually will finger, finger press it first just to get it started. I just find that easier. And then I also find it easier if you turn it this way so your iron tip can run up that edge. Now I will usually put this aside and just set my Taylor's clapper on that and I'll just let that cool while I'm pressing my next one. And the key to these is just to let your iron sit on it for a second before you move it. Now we're just gonna let these sit until they cool. I find that I have a hard time keeping my seams open, so just letting it cool with that on top of it just really helps um, flatten those seams. See, look, super nice, right? So I'm gonna set those aside. I'm gonna finish flattening all the seams except for these blue ones, and then that way you can see if it makes a difference or not in your block. Uh, just takes you know an extra step and you just have to be patient, um, but it will make your block look really nice and flat on the front. Because there's gonna be a lot of seams coming together with all of these pinwheels. All right, so all of our seams are pressed open except our blues, so we just need to keep that in mind. The next thing we're gonna do is just get these other colors out of the way and we're gonna trim these blocks up. I'm making the 12 and a half inch blocks, so I'm gonna trim these up to three and a half. Now, as you'll notice, and this is with all of my other blocks as well, is I leave you plenty of space around the outside of these to trim them up so that your half square triangles will be almost like actually perfect. So even if your sewing is a little bit wonky, um, you still end up with a lovely, perfect half square triangle. And I've said this before, but even if patterns don't allow for it, a lot of times I will personally figure out what size finished half square triangle I need, and then I will add in some extra buffer, just so that if any of my stitching got wonky, um, I can have enough to trim it up so that it's absolutely perfect. So I left you about, um, about a quarter of an inch to a half an inch extra on these. It kind of depends again on your seams. I tend to sew a scant quarter of an inch seam, so I will have probably a little bit extra more than what you're gonna have, uh, but it really just depends on how accurate your quarter inch seams are. Okay, so I'm gonna finish up trimming all of these to three and a half inches. If you're making the six and a half inch block, obviously you're gonna want to um, follow the instructions for that one. Okay, now we've got all of our half square triangles trimmed up and ready to go. And we're just gonna assemble these the exact same way. So I'm gonna show you one. So what you're gonna wanna do is turn your fabrics according to the pattern, there's diagrams in the pattern, but you're gonna want your green points to all come towards the center, but you're always gonna have your fabric touching the opposite color. So you're never gonna have a green touching a green. So you're gonna twist it so that you've got your green coming towards the center, but it's gonna always be touching the opposite fabric. Scoot that up. So it looks just like that. And then I like to, pinwheels are the perfect time for you to mess up and accidentally spin something and have it go the wrong way. So I like to pin these, and if we've pressed either towards our dark fabric, as you'll see on our blue, or open, these seams are gonna just line up really nicely. So I'm gonna go ahead and just stick a pin in there. Now because we've pressed this one open, our seams should line up really nice. You should have that green really just matching up nicely. And so I'll sometimes even take a pin and stick it right in that center bit so that I know that it's straight. Okay, so I'm gonna flip this one over here. Stick in a pin. And then we're just gonna take this to our machine and sew down this side. Now I'm gonna go ahead and stack that over at my machine and I'm gonna prepare all of them so I can sew them all at once. So again, we're gonna turn it so that our pinks are going towards the center but they're not touching the other pinks. So we've got our pinwheel. Now one thing about this pattern, and you're gonna kinda want to make sure that you're sewing all your pinwheels going the same direction. Um, and we do, we've got, and I'm just following my pattern. Um, but if they're all going the same direction, then you're good. You don't want to accidentally sew one 
this way because when there's no way that you can turn this that it'll match the one we just did. So I just make sure that my top one, the fabric, is going towards the top right and then my pinwheel is spinning this way. So you don't want some spinning that way and some spinning this way, otherwise when you go to put your block together, it's gonna look a little bit wonky. And again, I'm pinning even though technically, you know, these are small enough that you don't really have to pin. I like to pin because that way when I get this over to my machine, I make sure I'm sewing on the correct side. It is definitely easy to get over there and accidentally sew on the wrong side and then your pinwheel is going the wrong direction. Okay, so now I'm gonna put the blue one together. Now this is the one that we pressed towards the blue. So when you flip this right side down, this seam right here will nest. Okay, so we it's nesting, so you've got this seam going to the right and then if you flip it over, that seam's going to the left. So those will just nest really nicely. And so that is one bonus of pressing to one side with these pinwheels. Um, but we'll take a look and see how much bulk it creates in the middle and whether it's worth it to spend time pressing open or not. Okay, so we're gonna take these all to our machine and just sew down this edge using a quarter of an inch seam. Here they are. I'm gonna go ahead and just cut them apart. I know they're, the green ones go together, the blue ones go together. And then now we can press these. So let's scoot this over. And then again, we're gonna press these to one side first. It doesn't matter for this one because we're pressing it open. And then we'll flip it over. I usually let that cool just a little bit so I don't burn myself. And then we'll take our iron and finish pressing that open. And I will place my Taylor's clapper on there and we'll just let that cool. Now for this blue one, we're just going to keep with pressing to one way. So I'll press one side. Again, I'm just gonna to press towards the blue. It's just safest when you're doing it this way to just always press towards the colored fabric. Okay, so then we're gonna press this one to the left. And you can see here on the back that I've got this one going to the left, this one going to the right. All right, while that's cooling, I'm gonna go ahead and start pinning these together. I also just give them one last look to make sure they're going the right direction. And then I'm going to just make sure that these line up good in the middle. And I'll stick a pin there. And then for the blue one, again, I can just nest these seams. So that one is easy to make sure it's lined up. Okay, and then we can take all of these over to our machine and then sew down this side using a quarter inch seam allowance. So here they are, and now I can just clip them apart and press them. And then for these, I'm going to again press open, and I'm just going to press them all really quick and then I'll go back and press them open. Now to press these open, there is gonna be a little stitch right here that you have to clip and you'll see it. Um, it's just, you know, from sewing across. And you just have to clip that open before you can press this center open. Personally, I find this center a little bit finicky. <laughs> so 
My preference is typically not to press open. I, it's, I feel like it's a pain, it takes extra time, but let's see, let's see if it's worth it. The hardest part, and I always try and press these with my fingers first, the hardest part is this darn center. It's just a pain. Now, I will say that a little cheater, I don't know if it's cheating, I think that whatever works isn't cheating, but a little cheater tip would be to take a little bit of Best Press, kind of spray it there in the middle, and then that will help that center lie a little bit flatter when you're pressing it. So here is what our backs are looking like. I can feel a little thickness there, whereas here it really is quite a bit flatter. And I'll show you what that looks like up close. So here's what that pressed seam open looks like up close. And it definitely is a little bit flatter, I will say. I don't feel that so much on the front. I can feel this one, but let's look at it and see what it looks like, if it was worth all the extra time. So there's exhibit A and there's exhibit B. So that's what it looks like. You can decide on your own whether or not it's worth the extra effort. Okay, now our last step here is to decide what we want where. And again, I'm gonna make sure they're all going the same way and they should be because we sewed them the same direction. And I think I wanna separate the pink and the red like that. Now I forgot, but normally I would trim these up first and let's just check them all really quick. And they're actually, you're gonna to wanna to trim these for the larger block to six and a half. This one's a little bit bigger on this side, but since that's on the edge, not gonna worry about it, okay? But you would want to trim those up if they were off at all. All right, so let's go ahead and we're going to place these right side down. I am gonna stick a pin right where those seams kind of meet. Now ideally you'll press all your seams similarly so that your blocks will all look the same. And then we're gonna take these to the sewing machine and just sew down this far side. Okay, and then one thing I want to show you really quick that I forgot, so I wanna show you, is when you're sewing these and you're sewing across, your goal is to stitch right there. You can see where those come together in that point. Your goal is to stitch right there in that same point. That way you'll have nice crisp points in the center of your pinwheel. All right, so I've pressed these both to the side and then we can just press them open just like we've been doing. You could also just press these to one side. Again, personal preference, but since we've pressed most of them, except for this poor, sad blue block <laughs> to, to the open, we'll go ahead and just stick with that. Okay, they've cooled. They're pressed open. It looks lovely. Now we just need to line these up. Now for this one, I do kind of want these to line up, so I'm gonna do my best to pin at these junctions. Okay, so we've pinned at all of our junctions and now we just need to go and sew that and we'll be done with our block. Again, I'm gonna go for this center point there, if I can make it. And we have our last bit of pressing. We're gonna press it to one side. So again, I'm gonna Flip it over and press that all open. And I'm gonna have a stitch in there I think that I have to cut as well. I'm just gonna do a little bit of extra pressing there in the middle here, but ooh, those came together so nicely. By the way, I'm talking modern American vintage into making me a 12 inch square <laughs> Taylor's clapper so that I can just really press the heck out of some of these blocks that kind of need it. But for now, the ruler works. Um, if you don't put something on top of it, your ruler can kind of warp a little bit. So do this at your own risk, but I am sharing what I do in these videos. So this is what I do. And I'm just gonna let that sit there until it cools. 
All righty. Woo, there we go. Nice flat block. These are nice and flat. I do have that little bump in here and you would have that here for sure if you hadn't pressed your seams open. And now I'm just gonna use my diagonal on my ruler there. I'm also gonna use the white lines because these white lines are the exact center and then there's, it shows you where the exact center of this is. I've got a little bit of extra, so I'm just gonna trim that off. Not much, this block is actually pretty good. Here we have our finished block and here's what it's looking like on the back side. Okay, this seam got a little unruly, but otherwise it's looking really good. Now, in my opinion, this is a little bit cleaner, but I really do have a bump there. So I'm gonna say um, consensus is it's worth it to press your seams open when you're doing the pinwheel block. So anyways, there it is on the back, there it is on the front you can decide what you want to do with your block. So that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this block, this four pinwheel block. And as we saw in the video, it did help to press our seams open. So even though it takes just a little bit more time, I think in blocks like this, where you have so many seams coming together, it really is worth that extra time. Now today is the last block. So we have all 12 of our blocks finished. In the next video, I will be back and I'll show you a couple of different options on how to put these blocks together in a really cute quilt. I think I have about three different finishing options for you so you can kind of make it your own. Anyways, I hope you've enjoyed this series. Thank you so much for joining me. If you liked today's video, please make sure to thumbs up and subscribe. That way I know to keep making them for you. You can also hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any upcoming fun. So thank you so much for joining me today and I will see you next time.